Let's All right, well, let's set this thing up. Let's do it. <clears throat> What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Dad Diary. I'm your host, Danny Jordan. And normally, to my right, there's an empty chair because uh, my guests usually make an entrance, but this guy was like, no, no, no. I'm, I'm just gonna be there right at the beginning and be a part of the whole entire show, which I'm so grateful for. This is the holiday special. The Dad Diary Holiday Special. I couldn't think of anyone more fitting to join me for my holiday special than Mr. Basically Chris Kringle Jr. himself. Yes. Uh, Broadway star, sitcom star, star of life, star at the top of everybody's Christmas tree. <laughs> it is Eric Peterson, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Thanks for yeah. the crowd. They're all going. Oh, I know, I know. Oh, That's why we have the, um, the barricade. That's cool. Uh, keeps, keeps them back. Keeps the yeah. crazies over there. Anyway. You may recognize Eric if you're a huge theater fan from such incredible turns on Broadway as you played Shrek uh -huh. in Shrek on Broadway and the National Tour, yes, which yeah. came here to LA. Yeah. You were also Dewey uh -huh. in School of Rock yes. on Broadway. You were my only Dewey that I ever experienced nice. in School of Rock. So thank you, thank you. Thank you. Uh, you also were an Escape to Margarita Escape to Margaritaville, yeah, which was a rip roaring good time at the Absolutely. Marquee Theater, yes. right, in yeah, Times yeah. Square, yeah. and then yeah. you went on, you toured with that. We toured before, before Broadway, yeah, right. it's like a pre-Broadway pre -Broadway which, which is kind of fun. It was fun, like, very fun. To, or to like end your tour on Broadway is yeah, pretty, yeah. pretty neat. It was, uh, and it was other than like, I think two people, it was all the same cast, so we sort of like knew we were going to Broadway, which is a great place to be in life, yeah. and you're like, we're going to Broadway. <laughs> um, but yeah, we had a great time. That's that. awesome. And then, of course, years ago, you were one of the stars of Kirstie Alley's sitcom yes. called Kirstie. Kirstie, yeah, Kirstie yeah, excuse yeah. me, it's a Kirstie. Yeah, it's, she probably yeah. doesn't like when people sure. do that. I think it's and Kirstie. she's probably watching, so Kirstie, I'm very, very Hello, sorry. Kirstie. You remember Eric? Yes. yes. It was like what the billboard was like three, you know, sitcom legends and Eric. And Eric, yeah, because it starred uh, Kirstie Alley, Michael Richards, Rhea Perlman, and me. And so, yeah, the billboards <laughs> were like the three of them on a couch, like all kind of looking at me, and I was on the end with a big gulp. So it said, three comedy legends and Eric. That's brilliant. And it was pretty fun. Hey, but you were on the show. Yeah, yeah. No one else yeah. got to be in there. That's right, that's right. You were the only one. Anyway, great. I'm so grateful that you're here today. Happy to be here. Ah, happy holidays. Happy holidays, Merry way, Christmas. It's very festive here. I like what you, I, mean, dad. I like most of what you got going on here. We've talked about this before. Oh, I, the we, Packers. We, you're a huge Packers fan, that's right. Oh, gross. <laughs> I, I, that's why I sat on this side, so that I didn't have to be near uh, the Packers stuff. Well, good news, you won't have to play them in the playoffs this year. <laughs> okay, okay. Because the Thank you very open. much. It's been fun, <laughs> and uh, I will. Well, now uh, you can, so I'll you're not going to make a grand entrance. No, you're just going to make I'm a grand leave. A grand now exit. I'm well, Goodbye. happy holidays, everybody. It was a pleasure. No, Eric, come back. Eric. Okay. Come on. I'm back. Come on, I'm come back. on Eric. This, I'm back. This is silly. This is a time of of giving. Coming together. I was giving you some crap. This is. Crap. <laughs> So I'm giving you, you for did. Christmas this you year. Did. You anyway, did. Eric, I'm grateful that you're here. Yes, we decked <coughs> out the dad den. We've got Christmas lights. I've got a little garland that I picked up at Lowe's here with some berries on it. Love and it. Uh, because half of my family is Jewish, uh -huh. we've got Hanukkah represented here as well because Hanukkah started last night. Yes. And Christmas is in two days. Oh my gosh, two Can days. Can you believe that? I still have shopping to do. Do you really? I do. I love that instead of going shopping for your family, you're I'm here. here with, I'm here with you're you. You're here with me, and I'm that that means a lot to me. Well, we'll keep this brief then, so that way you can sure, run off sure, to the stores sure. and lose your mind. Uh, anyway, it is the holiday season, and you know, holidays when you have kids is is an experience. It sort of it changes. It's like you have like holidays as a kid. Yes. And then you get a little bit older, and then you get like a driver's license, and if you're like me and your parents are divorced. Now you gotta drive all over town sure. to try to see everybody. And then you get older and you're like, you know what? Now that I have like kids and a family, everyone's gotta come to see me. Come to me. Which Absolutely. is what we're sort of doing. But in your case, it's interesting. So you have two kids. Let's take you back a little bit. Yes. You've got a boy, Miles, who's four, right? He's four, almost five. He'll be five oh, next month. I'm sure you remind you of that. Yes, he's all four, four and three quarters, as oh, he wow. likes to say. He's like four and 11, 12. So he is, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then you have a daughter, Sophie, Sophie who is nine. incredibly talented. Thank you very much. By yes, the way, she's very talented. Eric put on a holiday show. I did. Here in Southern California, a Rockwell table and stage mm -hmm. a few weeks ago, and it kicked off the holiday season perfectly, and it was a family affair. It was. My, my uh, wife, who is now a preschool teacher but was an actress when we met we sang a song together and then my daughter and I sang a song together and then my son even had his stage debut which was very exciting 
uh, and he told four jokes. He did. Which killed and crushed. I have to say, this is actually really cool. He, uh, so he's never been on stage, uh, and he's never really shown a huge like desire of being like, oh, I want to be on stage like daddy. Whereas my daughter at four, we already knew mm. she was like destined to be an, a little actress, right? Yeah. But he hasn't really shown that, which is fine. Like that's his journey of yeah. where, wherever he's going in life. Um, but he loves telling jokes and he's very good at it in his little joke book. And so we said, we were like, do you think you want to tell some jokes at daddy's show? Cause you know, Sophie's going to perform and mommy's going to perform. <laughs> and he was like, Okay, and I, I really didn't know how it was going to go. I didn't yeah. know if he would kind of freeze up in the moment or if he would like refuse to come on stage. But he did, and he crushed, and he, he was so funny, and he was so confident. And I can tell you the show was only two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. In the two weeks since that, he just like has walked a little taller. Really? And like his shoulders are back a little bit more. He's like talking a little bit louder. He was never a shy kid, but there, I can honestly see like a change just in two weeks of like a confidence in him. That's so from cool. that moment, which is really cool to see. That's got to be cool because you, as a performer, I'm sure you know you probably get asked the question a lot. It's like, what was that moment where you knew like this is what I yeah, wanted to yeah, do yeah, yeah. with my life? And everyone sort of has like I think that moment, whether you're a stage actor or a film actor, or whatever, you're a singer, and I'm sure you remember yours. Yeah. And this was. If Miles, if that's the route he goes in yes. his life, I imagine that night at that holiday show would be like, yes. well, my dad told me I could tell some jokes and yeah. I just love that. I got laughs and felt, yeah, totally. And we have it on video, which is great. You'll have it forever, <laughs> so when great, they yeah. do his true Hollywood story. That's you know, right, we and, can show that first moment of him on stage. Well, it all started when my dad made me get up there and <laughs> tell some jokes right. at this holiday show yeah, totally. where he made 20 bucks. Like, <laughs> right, exactly. Anyway, well, it is the holiday season, and, and I wanted to dig into the holidays because you've had more holidays as a parent sure, yes. than I have. And, and obviously, you're a big holiday person. Nobody Love puts on a Christmas. holiday concert that doesn't like the holidays. I really I love Christmas, like Why? in a deep, deep way. Uh, I think I've always uh, longed for a sort of like Norman Rockwell existence. Mm. Like even when I was a kid, I remember when I was a, a young kid, like probably seven, eight years old, I imagined being a dad at Christmas. Like oh, wow. I, I, rem I remember imagining when I was on a soccer team when I was a kid, being like, I can't wait till I'm like the coach, the dad coach <laughs> of the team. Like I just always like pictured that sort of like old school, you know, Bing Crosby in the pipe and like, <laughs> and like I, I just love that kind of sense of nostalgia and and classic like memories, even mm. though they're they're made up and they're not real and they're not mine. Like yeah. I think I was always like shooting for that, and so uh, in 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 light of that, you know, I love Christmas music, I love Christmas lights, I mm. love Christmas movies, I love the food at Christmas, I love families coming together, I love the sense of like people slowing down mm. and, and like kind of connecting. I love uh, traditions, so I, I just. I like that stuff in life in general, and yeah. it seems to all come together at Christmas time. It really does. I think you're right. Like everything seems to slow down a lot more, and you sort of like look back on the year that you've just been through, and like you look back and you're you're thankful for all the people that you have in your life, yeah. or maybe you're thankful that like this year wasn't like last year. Yeah. I've been going through a lot of that lately. Now, for you, was your fan like were your parents really into Christmas? Yeah, okay. yeah, I think so. I mean, I don't think you know. It wasn't like, it wasn't like my dad was like Clark Griswold. You yeah. Know? Like he wasn't he wasn't the dad that was like, as right away like let's put up the Christmas lights. <laughs> but he but he always did and like and my mom was definitely you know my mom was uh, a piano teacher and sang in choir and played in mm. church uh, you know the the bell choir and played uh, flute and piccolo in a symphony orchestra. So we were always going to like music events yeah. at the holidays. Um, but yeah, we always, uh, it, it felt, very, I grew up in Chicago, it felt very normal. Like it yeah. wasn't an over the top amount, but it was, they, we were definitely into it. So knowing that like your parents were like, like they enjoyed Christmas, and it was mm -hmm. something that you guys did at home and as a part of your childhood. Was there something you experienced as a kid where you're like, oh my gosh, I'm obsessed with Christmas, like even more than my parents are like what was that a trigger moment <laughs> well i mean i had a mo i talked about this in my show actually i i had a moment where I, when i saw santa claus mm. in real life which was 
like a really formative moment. I was probably like seven years old, seven, eight years old. And I was in the back seat of my mom's uh, purple Previa minivan, Toyota Previa. And we were, it was like evening time, so it was dark out. And we were in like the going straight lane and then there was a turn lane to the left of us. And I remember I was just sitting there and I happened to look to my left and there was like an old like cab, like old school yellow cab was there. And in yeah. the back seat of the cab was Santa Claus. Whoa. And like, I kind of looked at him and he was in street clothes, but he had like the, the beard and the glasses and everything. And he just sort of like turned and caught my eye and then like through the, the car windows, he just winked at me and then the light turned and he turned and we went straight and I was like, oh, like that, <laughs> that was Santa Claus. Yeah, like there yeah, was yeah. no doubt in my mind. Right. And so, I mean, that definitely solidified. Um, a, a deep love of Christmas. And I think just as a person, mm -hmm. most of my friends and family would tell you like, I kind of do everything to 11. Okay. So whatever, whatever I'm into, I sort of like really lean into it. You really like to get into it. So I much like so that you're wearing your, your dad's Christmas sweater. This here. is my dad's sweater, which yeah. is not, it's actually somewhat kind of coming back into fashion now. Yeah. But but the, I mean, you can tell by this weird like mock. Oh, that's neck. interesting. I don't yeah. even know what it's such an eighties thing. I hadn't thing. even noticed that until you pointed it it's out. It's like yeah. a weird. It's like a not, mock mock. It's not a turtleneck, and it's not a mock turtleneck. It's like no. And it's like it's, it's like should I be a turtle? No, no. no I'm let's just, not. I'm just gonna stay retreat, right retreat. Right yeah. yeah, that's uh, hysterical. But yeah, this was my dad's uh, uh, Christmas sweater. I love that 80s. you're you're still rocking that. I do. Yeah. My dad's sweaters wouldn't wouldn't fit me. Yeah, I think my dad's a little bit I'm, earlier than I. Am. I'm sh my dad is a, a big guy now, so I, I it shows me what my dad was and where oh, I'm probably wow. heading. Oh well, you know, who knows? So <laughs> who, knows? who knows? You know, time will tell. See what happens, as they say. So so you saw Santa Claus when you were a kid, riding around the, in the back of your mom's Previa, and then yeah. like, what's one of like your favorite Christmas memories as a kid? Like something that your parents did or something you guys did together that really. Like you look back and like, God, I'm so grateful for that. I mean, I loved, uh, I, I'll list a few. I love, I always loved when I was a little bit older, when I was more like 12, 13, mm -hmm. I loved going to midnight church. Mm. You know, we grew up Lutheran, so we didn't call it mass, but we, we called it just midnight church. Midnight service. Right? Yeah, midnight service, yeah. right? And I loved, uh, especially as I was like becoming a teenager, that feeling of like my parents sort of like ushering me into mm. like adulthood of like we're not gonna go we're not gonna go to the family service we're gonna go to the like adult service in the evening and mm. stay up late and it was always so beautiful I loved that um, I loved uh, I always loved my extended family always did a huge family Christmas they still do it a lot of times we can't go because it's in Chicago but right. I always loved because I had tons of aunts and uncles and cousins and everybody just running around I loved that. I remember also my uh, my mom had this little bell that was like covered in velvet mm. and it had like a gold trim to it and a little ribbon and it had like a picture of Mary and Joseph and big Jesus on it and it, uh, it had a, it was like a music uh, music box you could uh, turn it and it played Silent Night and I just like always remember like that coming out and it mm. felt like I don't know if it was just my mom's or maybe my grandmother's who I never got to meet, but it like that particular decoration always mm. felt like it had such history to it. Right. Um, and I remember like, I'd always like listening to it, but I, I have like very clear, distinct memories of like on Christmas Eve after like we've already gone to church and everything's kind of done and everything's wrapped and it's that like quiet moment when you're like, all right, now it really is that like, we're all going to go to sleep. And, Tomorrow will be Christmas morning, you know? Yeah. And I remember like just playing that bell and just kind of like sitting on the couch and listening to that and the Christmas lights are on and there's no TV on, there's no mm -hmm. music. Um, and I love, I, I, like I have a clear memory of that kind of calmness mm. on Christmas Eve, which I love. It's interesting you bring up calmness because I've been thinking about that a lot mm -hmm. lately, like over the last couple of weeks. Like, I don't know if you've battled this, you know, at times, like I maybe it's just becoming an adult, I don't know, but there's times where like, if Christmas doesn't feel the same anymore, sure. right? Like, and, and I guess that's part of getting older is that you have more responsibilities and more places to be and more people need you. But like the calmness is interesting to me because like, I feel like there's so much noise all the time. I mean, yes. that literally and figuratively is that like 
you know, obviously everyone talks about phones and like how we're always available via email and text and calls and notifications and all this sort of stuff is that you have so many things sort of pulling at your attention all the time that for me, like around Christmas is where I really notice it because I feel so fractured where like sure. my attention is here and there that I can't fully feel yeah, yeah, like yeah. you're saying the quietness, like the yeah. stillness of the season. And I've, I've really committed this year to like slowing down and just being still like my wife and I for the last week have watched, we've sat at night after our daughter has gone down to bed and we've just sat and watched a holiday movie together mm -hmm. every night. And it's just sort of like, we didn't plan it. Yeah. It just became a thing. But now that like, it's our thing. That's it's a tradition. It's a tradition, yeah, totally. right? You yeah. know, we always would do holiday movies with like, we'd invite family over, but this sure. time it's, it's just us. And some nights we wrap gifts and sometimes we pop pop popcorn. Yeah. Sometimes we pour a glass of wine and like, it's helped me to slow down because like, I love, I don't know if you're like me, but I love giving gifts. Mm -hmm. yeah. I love giving gifts that aren't on lists. Mm -hmm. That's And oh, I know yeah. that in some ways that's a little dangerous. Sure. Because people are like, oh, but it's like the when, it, thing, when yeah. it lands, it's that much more satisfying. It's the best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I found myself this year because you know, I've been fortunate that work's been really, really busy, but it took me almost <clears> all the way up <throat> until the holiday. Right. So like my family, my mom's side, everyone created Amazon wish lists. And then we had like a master email thread sure. and everyone sent their Amazon wish list out. Yeah. And then we started like sub threads for everybody to be like, I got so-and-so this, right. and I got so-and-so that. This is off the list. Yeah. And it was like, there was no tactile experience for me of walking through the aisles of Target or Home yeah, Goods yeah. or whatever it is and be like, oh wait, I know that's not on their list, but Andrew would love that. Yeah. And you could only know that by walking through the aisle and thinking about him and knowing something about him. Yes. And so I bought all this stuff on Amazon and I was feeling very unsatisfied because sure. like, it was like click, 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 click. Yeah. And then everybody knows that everybody's getting because yeah. you're like, oh, I got so-and-so this and I got so-and-so to that. So there's no surprise sure. on Christmas. So the last few days I said, screw it to Amazon shopping. Yeah. And I've been out like pounding the pavement yeah. out on the street and it's felt so good. Now I've got like too many gifts for everybody, sure. but I don't care Yeah. because I'm like, they're it, gonna love this, the, and it is true. The you know, my wife and I, sadly, this year is I think gonna be one of these Christmases where we because with having two young kids, like the time to go to the mall by yourself mm -hmm. is sort of just not afforded to right. you. So, like I, I know what my wife is getting me. She knows what I'm getting her mm -hmm. because like it either was ordered and we saw it come in or like, but there isn't like that moment of like. Oh, this is something that I picked out. They're not expecting mm -hmm. it. And that is like, that is one of the better parts of Christmas. I love it. And I feel like too, and I'm speaking from personal experiences. Like I feel like we've lost that yeah. a bit, you know? Yeah. And, and I think that's part of the stillness of Christmas. That's part of the quietness, the, the anticipation of yes. not knowing what's going to be under that yeah. tree, but also not, but like the excitement for you knowing that, you were walking around that store, you were driving in the car one day and all of a sudden this idea hit you and you're like, oh my gosh, if my if I got this for my mom, yeah, she would lose she her mind. And it's not yeah. on her list, it's not the the new, you know, you know, Fitbit that she yeah, wants yeah, or whatever, yeah. but it is this thing that she doesn't even know that she Because wants. I mean the the reason that a gift when getting or giving a gift really lands is that you are saying I know who you are mm -hmm. and I know who you are in here Yeah, and I found something that will fit just right with you. Yes. You know, and if it is something that is, you know, something that they've already said, I want this, then there, you're losing the, the emotional transaction mm. of saying, I know who you are and this is how I'm showing you that I know mm. who you are. Yeah. Um, yeah. I remember when, <laughs> when I was a kid, I used to be the worst about keeping secrets of gifts. Okay. So like my dad, when he would take me shopping for like my mom and my brother and stuff, we had to go like on the 23rd or 24th because there were multiple years where he would take me on like the 20th yeah. and I, there's no way I could last five days without <laughs> telling my mom that we got our new isotoner gloves. You know, like, <laughs> I was like, we got new gloves, yeah. you're gonna love them. You know? <laughs> and she was like, you gotta wait till Christmas. So right. I think, yeah. But I, yeah. I, I feel you on that. And I, what the exciting part for me about the surprise is that like, I like being surprised. Yeah. You know, like this whole idea of like, send out a list and the reality is like, I could just go click on my Amazon wish list and all the items that are gone, 
Now I know I'm getting that. Now I know I'm getting that. And it's yeah. not about like the idea of getting something. It's like, I think when you ask somebody for a Christmas list, you make a great point about knowing what's in here. Yeah. Is it usually what's in here is not a Christmas list. Right. It's, it's what's up here. It's like the, the commerce side of somebody that's totally. like, what's the thing that I need that will fill this need that I think that I have right. rather than like this, like this year, a couple items that I would have, my mom would never put on a list or someone would never put on a list that I hadn't even thought of yeah. till I was walking through the aisles and I saw it and it brought back a memory from childhood sure. or like now that I'm a parent, this book that I knew we had in the house growing up, now I know means something brand new to me. Totally. And it's going to mean something brand new yes. to her. And there's yeah. something, be mom, spoiler alert, <laughs> I'm not going to tell you the name of the book. Right? <laughs> or, this is all hypothetical, actually. Sure, yeah, so, yeah. All hypothetical, but I think that's important for a lot of us to to remember. And, and I think especially when you have kids, right? Like this idea of they may make a list, right? But thinking, like, to think about your kids and, like, what are the things that you know would mean a lot to them mm -hmm. that are going to go well beyond the the thing that they think they might yes. need? Like, I mean, you're obviously in this more than I am because you've got a four-year-old and a nine-year-old. Sure. And, and they understand, like, what this toy is and what that book is or whatever. Well, here's what I'll tell you, though, is that, at least with my kids, what I find is, like, when we ask them to make their Christmas list, you know, we gave them, like, the Target catalog, and they're kind of, like, flipping through... And they'll see something that's mm -hmm. bright and shiny and new, and they're like, oh, I want that. And I'm like, you've never talked about that thing, or, you know, if it's a character based on a movie, you've never seen that movie. Like, you just are, it's just what kind of popped in front of your mm -hmm. face. And so we've always tried to, like, steer them a little bit. When, yeah. And we've had years where it it's gotten out of control. Mm -hmm. So, like, they point to something, that I know they don't really want, but just sort of is the thing that popped up in front of them. And if what we've found as parents is if we don't like shut that down right away, yeah, <laughs> then it can be like, well, that's what they've been saying they want for a month, but they don't really want it, you know? Right. So we, th that's one lesson that we've learned as our kids get a little bit older of like, if you see something that's either way too expensive mm -hmm. and not in the budget of their family or something that you know is not really something that they want, it's just what was shiny in front of them. Right shut it down right away and just be mm -hmm. like, and not in a mean way, but just be like, well, I don't know about that. Or we can keep that in mind, but let's keep looking or, you know, to just kind of get them off of that. Cause a kid can get stuck on, you know, it's like Christmas story. Mm -hmm. Like I need the Red Ryder BB gun. Like w once they know that that's the thing that they want, yeah. then they can be a little fixated on it. Um, and they think that you're expecting them to pre like present you with this perfect list right. of things like, well, I got this catalog. Right. They need me to circle items. So right. I'm just gonna. I'm just fulfilling I'm my just, duty. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Like kids love rules and yes. structure. Yes. And if you hand them a catalog, it's like, what do you like in there? Yeah. They'd be like, well, I don't. I, they said I need to pick some things. Yeah. And now so I here's just what I'll pick. Find yeah. some things. Totally. I will say, last year we did a big gift for both of our kids, which okay. was very exciting. Uh, we got uh, a trip to Paris for my oh, wow. for my daughter and my wife to go together it's for like a home weekend. Alone. It was <laughs> kind of like home alone, uh, and uh, it was sort of our last gift. But it, that was one of those gifts that like was totally unexpected. My mm -hmm. daughter was not asking to go to Paris. I mean, she was like in a general sense. Whenever she loved Paris stuff, and mm -hmm. so she'd always be like, "I want to go to Paris someday." But like, <laughs> she wasn't saying like, "I want a trip to Paris for right. Christmas." You right. Know? Um, but we knew that she loved that stuff and I was looking for a gift that would like really give my wife and my daughter at this very kind mm. of impressionable age, mm. like a, an experience together. Cause that's another big thing in gift giving from a parenting point of view, mm. that is kind of like a new trend is this idea of don't give your kids toys or don't give them as many toys, get them experiences mm. that it's like a better uh, they've done studies and stuff that I'm sure you can put a link to some of these. Yeah. You can find them. Um, that say that you're better off getting a family vacation mm. to Paris or to, you know, right. wherever. Um, and that those memories will last so much longer than whatever the newest Mario Kart toy was. Right. That they play with for 10 minutes and they kind of are like, oh, that was awesome. But then they move on. But if you say, hey, you're not going to get as many toys this year, but we're going to Disney World or we're, yeah. you know, going to do something. 
uh, that those things can really have a much longer kind of deeper effect on the kids. That's amazing. I, I love those sorts of gifts in general because I think again that ties into knowing somebody. Totally. Right? And then, but in a kid's, you know, in the, like the case of a child, it's like you're then like sort of forming that that heart. Yeah. Right? Of like what matters to them around this time of year or in life in general. Is it is it things or is it experiences? Yeah. You know, because like, like you said, a toy, the wheels will bust off of a car yeah. at some point or they just may outgrow like playing with this action yeah. figure, you yeah. know? But always they'll always have the memory yeah. of the time that they went to Paris or the yeah. time you you went to spring training or Disneyland yeah, or totally. whatever it might be because that's that's not uh, like like it's not physical it, it's bigger yeah. than that you yeah. know it's it's in the fiber of who you are yeah. which I think is again speaks to what this season is about it's right? like yeah. it's about togetherness it's about like being really being present mm -hmm. that's what sort of like I'm all about like finding meaning in words and like this idea yeah. of like what the definition of present has sort of become for me as I've gotten to like be having people present in my life is such a presence because time is so uh, valuable and it's yeah. so um, delicate that it can come and go like this. Like last year, I can't remember if I ever told you this, I probably did, but last year, uh, the week, seven days before Christmas, my dad had quadruple bypass. So last Christmas was like, and my dad is like, obsessed with yeah, Christmas yeah. like it is his favorite time of year like my dad's love language is giving <laughs> yeah. he loves giving gifts and yeah. like it's definitely like impacted me I have a different approach to it I think than, sure. than he does but like he loves giving stuff and I think the idea that not only was he having open heart surgery and having a quadruple bypass which is like yeah. terrifying in and of itself but that this person who loves the season and him being in the you know in the hospital during the holidays like last year was tough so like this year nobody's in the hospital right. But everybody's healthy, everybody's safe. My sister and brother-in-law just moved back with their daughter from yeah. from England and it's like such a such a happy time and it's like I'm just thrilled that like we all get to be together. You yes. know? And yeah. like that again, like that's what you were talking about earlier. It was like one of your favorite memories was yeah. like being with with all my family. With fa yeah. and actually being there, you know, because yeah. my wife, like her parents are divorced as well, and when you grow up with that sort of experience, it's like Okay, who are you gonna do the morning with, and who are you gonna spend Christmas Eve with, and like I said, well, then when you start driving, it's like well, I gotta go here, and then I gotta go there, and yeah. so for us, it's like I think we spend so much of our lives, like jumping all over the place, like the middle of our lives, you know, childhood we'd be at one place, then yeah. when we were older, it's like you gotta go everywhere. So now that we're older, we get to decide what the tradition is. We're really adamant about like Emerson's gonna be at home. Yes, she's gonna wake up on Christmas morning. Yeah. She's gonna get to open her because she like she can rip paper now yeah. and she loves like the reveal yeah, yeah. of what's inside of yeah. it and she just squeals whenever yeah. what no, no matter matter what it is it could be a book it's that there it was red and now it's colorful yeah, yeah. it could be a shirt and she's like ah like yeah. and I'm like that's incredible yes. like she's yes. just grateful that there's like something there and cause and effect and so yeah. like we're starting those traditions so I'm like curious you know at what age with your kids did you and your wife start like instilling like tradition and this is going to be the Peterson family tradition. You know, it's funny cuz we've lived a very transient lifestyle of right. move we've moved back and forth between New York and LA six times wow. with our kids. So, that is something that we are constantly searching for because as I said, you know, tradition is very important to me and especially at the holidays. And so, uh, we've had lots of like talks about that you know like there's we've had moments where we've gone to visit family uh in florida my my parents now live in florida and lisa's from my wife lisa is from florida so mm -hmm. her family's all down there so we'll go down to florida for christmas a lot and there's this year we're not and one of the conversations was while we want to see our family so badly and we miss them and we love them we were feeling like we wanted our kids to wake up in their house mm -hmm and have that moment, you know, yeah. because we had had a few Christmases in a row where we were at the grandparents' house all the way in Florida, which is wonderful, and it's not a shot against them, but it's not your own house. Mm -hmm. And so, unless that was going to be the tradition of their whole childhood, we always were there, you know, that would be one thing, but it's that's not always going to be the case. So, mm -hmm. we were, you know, looking for those moments to kind of like say, this is what we always do, mm. you know, as, as the Petersons at, at Christmas. And I think we've filled that with other things of like, 
you know, we love making cookies together. We mm. love opening one gift on Christmas Eve, you know, That's like, cool. so like those little things we try to like make happen wherever we are so that it's not as much about a place and more about like, exp again, going mm -hmm. back to experiences of like, we always do this, you know, we always open one present on Christmas Eve. Yeah. It's usually pajamas <laughs> and like, that's like a thing and we all know it's coming, but it's, it's, you know, just what we do. That's cool. Yeah. With my family, it's, we have a tradition, well, at least my, my mom's side of the family is because my stepdad is you know, Jewish, which is why I represent yeah. with the menorah here is every year, usually like one of the first nights of Hanukkah, uh, this is sort of funny, is we always do Hallmark ornaments every year. Sure. Like we all, we go meet my mom at the Hallmark store yeah. and we all walk the aisles and we, we pick out our ornament, yeah. right? And we all know what we got. Sure. But then my mom wraps them in Hanukkah <laughs> paper. Sure. And we get them on the first or second night of Hanukkah. Yeah. It's like our Hanukkah gift every year. And then yeah. we hang it on the tree at my parents' house. Yeah. And that's always been a thing. That to me is like always when I feel like Christmas is sort of starting, yeah. you know? Cause yeah. You know, I lived in New York for a while and, you know, my sister lived in Belgium for a while. So like we always seem to be back together around the sure. holidays and this yeah. idea that you can go all around the world, pursue your dreams, whatever, but you come back here and these things never change. Yeah, yeah. And it's cool to be in a place now, I'm sure you and your wife have been going through this, is like those traditions that your family didn't know they were creating traditions the first time they did it. Yes. But then it just became a thing. Like my mom sent a text the other day about the ornaments because mm -hmm. it was like less than a week to Christmas and we haven't gone to Hallmark yeah. yet. And my wife and I just left the Hallmark store and I'd comment on, oh, my mom hasn't messaged us. She messaged myself and my siblings and the in-laws uh, and was like, hey, so I know it's a little late in the game, but would everyone want to go meet up at the Hallmark store or is the... Or is that just kind of not a thing anymore? No. And I was like, Mom, absolutely. that will never not be yes. a thing anymore. Yes. It will always be a thing. It will always pick out goofy ornaments. Because yeah. we don't pick out like pretty little yeah. gold ornaments. It's like I get the Clark Griswold <laughs> ornament or the Harry right. Potter catching the snitch ornament yeah. or the, the Green Bay Packer ornament yeah. if they have one that year. But yeah, they don't have them very yeah. often since Brett Favre retired. But That's probably smart. Yeah, but those are the traditions that... Yeah that I love and even though your kids know they're getting pajamas yeah. and a Christmas Eve gift it's yeah. something you establish yeah. and I think that's important and my wife was adamant about like nobody's going to be here Christmas morning no one's spending the night Christmas Eve because you know you're trying to like plug in everyone into the yeah, schedule all the so time. that it all yeah. works and she was like no we're going to do us and at first I was like wait hey, yeah you know yeah. and I was like you know what no you're right this should be our thing Emerson should yeah. get to wake up and and this year we'll carry her out but like next year she'll walk out, yeah, you yeah. know, and then she'll get older, then she'll learn about Santa, yeah. you know, and yeah. then like, she'll look forward to her Santa gift. And yeah. it's like, but it starts you're, now. You're and like, it now, and yeah. it's really cool to be at that point where you're like, oh, wait a second. I, there was a point where like my parents took the baton yeah, and they started traditions. Yep. And now I'm a parent and like grandma and grandpa will go wherever. They just sure. want to see their grandkids, yeah. you know what I mean? And that's really I think it's cool fun. to, to know that some are chosen traditions, some things are like, I'm making this tradition for my family. Like yeah. I, as the father, am making this choice <laughs> and this is gonna be a tradition. Yeah. And those and those things are great, but also things that sort of, like you said, that just sort of like happen to become mm -hmm. a tradition. Like I have a tradition with my parents still, it's more of a Thanksgiving thing, but we always make a turkey on Christmas as well. Um, but every Thanksgiving, I always call my parents in the morning and I say, how do I make this turkey? Uh, and like, and they know it's coming and like, I know how to make the turkey, but it's like a thing now that I call them every Thanksgiving morning mm. and I'm like panicked, like, Wait, what temperature am I supposed to do the bird? I, you know, <laughs> and they're always like, okay, we'll send you the details. That's brilliant. Yeah, that's, that's like, like that a, kind of stuff that just sort of happens. That's like a Google Home commercial or something <laughs> yeah. like that, where the dad's yeah. panicked on the holidays and he calls up grandma and grandpa. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's really, really cool. Yeah. So do you remember, uh, I was thinking about this this last week, because Emerson met Santa for the first time yes. at Disneyland. Uh, and, and that was exciting, but like, <laughs> I had like a dad fail, I'm gonna call it. I'm going to call the dad fail because we're standing in line at California Adventure and the line's like 45 minutes long. Sure. It's a really long, but it's great because it's Disney and they've got it all themed down. There's people well. like yeah. walking up and down sure. and they're really great at improv. Sure. Uh, and they're just playing with the kids. They're <laughs> right. having a great time. Right. UCB like represented yeah. strong. 
And then like, so you're in this moment, but I, I hadn't given any thought to the process of Emerson meeting Santa for the first time. Yeah. So we got up there and like we were next and I, and I still was not thinking of it. And they're like, all right, come on up. And I just like walked up and handed my daughter to a stranger. Sure. And I've never done that. Yeah. I don't walk around anywhere and hand her to a stranger. Yeah. And so like the second I tried to hand her over to Santa, she immediately started crying yeah, yeah. and pushing away. We've got video of it, which I'll show you guys <laughs> here. Uh, but then like after the fact, I was like, oh my gosh. You should have prepped her. Why didn't I think, I should have prepped myself. Yeah, yeah. Why didn't I think through a plan of action for, oh, walk over, sit down with her on your knees, show right. her that Santa's cool. He's a friend of yours. He's a friend yeah. of mine, we're buddies, we've known each other for years. I didn't do that at all. Sure. So I try to hand her over, she screams. Santa's like, this little precious child doesn't want to be with her, right. whatever <laughs> he said. And so then I sat down with her, then my wife came over, then we hung out for a while. We yeah. got some funny pictures, cause she was like, this what and then of this? course the moment we get up to walk away she was like waving at santa wants right. to reach out i was like god we could have had a perfect santa photo yeah if only i would have thought thought through this what what was your first santa experience like with your kids um i don't remember the first time but i do have a story of um so we have the most and i i know it's my own kid and everybody thinks their own kid their own kid is great yeah. but i have the greatest Santa picture with my daughter when she was about four years old. Yeah. Um, which I will, I'll send, well, send it to you. And you yeah. can see it here. Yeah. Uh, it's so great that literally I showed it once at a dinner party and a guy who's like a very famous uh, Disney artist painter guy mm. was like, can I paint that? And I was oh, like, whoa. yes. And so he painted it on this, you know, beautiful canvas. And I bought it for my wife for Christmas one year because oh, dude. it was, it's, and I'll show you. And then here's a picture of the painting. Okay. Beautiful. So I love it. The story <laughs> of this though, was we were uh, visiting family in Orlando. They have a big mall in Orlando called Mall of Millennia. It's like their big super mall. Yeah. And what they did at that Santa experience, which I thought was amazing, was, uh, Everybody waited in line and then once it was your turn to meet Santa for the kids to meet Santa The parents were ushered so far away mm. from Santa There was a photographer and Santa and the kids mm. and so often in You know Today's world, you know both parents got cameras and they're trying to take pictures and then the person who's the official mall photographer is like all right look here and it's like it's fast there's yeah. too many things to look at and it does become just a little like whirlwindy of like, yeah. whoa, whoa, okay, oh, here's Santa, okay, whoa, look here, okay, we're smiling. And then, you know, and it's a little frantic. Yeah. At this place, they literally, they say, parents, trust us, we will get a great picture, but we will get a better picture if you're not there. Mm. Because it is about that moment of the child being like, Santa and Santa can be quiet mm. and just sort of like look them right in the eye and say hello and you know and so they get these amazing pictures because also they hire a photographer that's not like a you know teenage girl that's like all right like here take yeah, a picture bing, bing, right bing, bing, yeah. um so they 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 leaned into that aspect of it but also I think the getting the parents mm. away from it is a, is a really cool thing so what happened in this picture that you just saw was they, you know, Santa was talking to my daughter, but at one point they said, all right, fold your hands like you're making a prayer. And and then Santa's gonna whisper something in your ear. And there was the moment she was making her hands like this, and it was just a, an instant that she looked up with her eyeballs, and <laughs> I was watching from far away. I was like, oh, please tell me they got a picture of that. <laughs> and they did, and that's what that picture is. And so it was just the briefest moment of my daughter being like this, and then she looked up, and Santa's like whispering in her oh ear. Oh my gosh. And so I'll show you the picture because Danny's not seen the picture now. I have not. But you at home will have seen yeah, it. Yeah, you'll, you'll send it to me and we'll, we'll <laughs> yes. share it with everybody yes. out there. That, yeah. I, we don't have that photo. Uh, but we do have a pretty <laughs> cute photo. Uh, I know you saw this photo I, I put up on, on Facebook and some of you who follow Dad Diary might have seen it. We went two years ago to California Adventure, that same spot, yeah. and got the photo and we had been trying for a while and successfully yes. to have a kid and Santa was like, well, what do you want for Christmas this year? And we were like, we want a baby. And yeah. it's like, oh, 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 I'll see what I can do, you yeah. know, sort of situation. And, and yep. then Lynn got pregnant yeah. at the end of January, yeah. you know? And so to be back in that same exact Christmas spot. Christmas miracle. 
it really is like you know just like we were like you look at the setup and it is exactly yes. the same and we're back and emerson is there and he's just looking at her and it just was a really cool like completion of the circle yes. sort of moment it's like it is a christmas miracle sort Absolutely. of thing but i think you know i've been doing a lot of thinking about santa lately you know and mm -hmm. i read this really cool thing online the other day this i don't know who wrote this thing or if it's a true story or whatever right. but it's one of those things where like this kid approaches his dad and mm -hmm. you know, he's like nine or ten he's like right. dad you know like i feel like i'm old enough to to know whether or not santa is is real right. i want you to tell me the truth mm -hmm. and the dad is like are you sure you're ready for the truth because the thing about the truth in any situation is life in life is once you know it you know it and there's no changing it. Yeah. And he's like, no, I'm ready. And he goes, all right, well, Santa is real. But he's not an old man with a white beard and a, you know, a, a tummy full of jelly and all these sorts of things. He's, he's an idea. Mm -hmm. You know, he's the idea of giving for giving's sake. Mm -hmm. Giving without needing to be recognized mm -hmm. for giving. He goes, do you think all those years when I gave you gifts, and you were thanking Santa that I was jealous. Right. No, no, because I loved seeing you happy and it taught me about giving without needing to be recognized. Yeah. And then he goes on to say, he goes, so like the other day on the subway platform when the lady collapsed and I told someone to call an ambulance and, and, and they you know, took her away, do I care that she doesn't know that I was the one who told them right. to call the paramedics? No, because that's what you do. You yeah. give forgiving sake. Yeah. He goes, but now, because you know the truth, you have a responsibility to make sure that you keep the idea and the magic yeah. of Santa yeah. alive. And it's so interesting, you know, because I, I honestly have been thinking over the last few weeks about Santa Claus, you know, sure. um, and Will Emerson know Santa in the way that like I knew sure. Santa growing up that like, you know, swirly letters on right. you know things that didn't look like my parents writing yeah. and all this sort of stuff and and I was like you know what I want her to believe in things mm -hmm. do you know what I mean like I had this sort of like aha moment this morning when I, when I was getting ready for you to come over about the idea of like what Santa can represent in the world and in the lives of children if that's what you celebrate and for me, it was like this idea of believing in something that you can't see. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times I think that's imperative for your own life. Because like, you know, in your, the career that you pursued and were so fortunate to, you know, you've made a career out of it and you've mm -hmm. done it at the highest level. How many people dream of Broadway, you know, working mm -hmm. on Broadway or, or being a, a star of a, of a sitcom that's on television or producing TV shows or being an astronaut or whatever mm -hmm. it is, but like, you had to have something in you, the foundation that was laid at some point that taught you that if you believe in something that's not tangible, that you can't see and you can't touch it, but you can see it. Mm -hmm. You can see that vision and you know beyond a shadow of a doubt inside yourself that it's real. Mm -hmm. You're teaching, I think, people a great lesson. Absolutely. Which is that you, just because something's not tangible is that it is possible. Absolutely. And you just have... It's faith. It's faith. It's, it's faith of, you know, I, uh, I'm, I'm a Christian and so I, that's a big part of the word faith to me. Um, but it's not just about a relationship with God or anything like that. But I remember as a teenager at like a church youth group thing, thing there was... Uh, I'm trying to think what the exact drawing was. It was like a drawing of like a person and then a, uh, and they were on a cliff and then mm. there was a drawing of another cliff that said God, right? Mm. And then the bridge, the invisible bridge was faith. Mm. And so you can sort of supplement that with whatever it might be of, you know, you're here and somewhere that you want to get to or a deeper truth that you want to know yeah. or a place that you would like to be living in, in yourself or in the world. The bridge, the invisible bridge that is there, that's faith. And mm -hmm. that's what walking in faith is. Whether it be a relationship with God or just, as I said, like uh, where you're trying to go in your life mm -hmm. of like, this is my goal. I have faith that I'm going to get there. Right. And, and it's wild to think that, I'm sure people would argue that, you know, like, well, you're teaching them to believe in something that's not real. And that's why I love that, that piece about it. It's not about, like, the red suit and the white yeah. beard is the the figure you know sure, which yeah. helps children to like visualize because yeah. they 
they're not at that point yet. Right. But then at that point where they start to like question it, it's having that answer of like that it's an idea, right? Yes. It's not about it's not a lie. It's, it's not a lie. It's yeah. the idea of spirit it, or, yes. or, or the spirit of Christmas, yeah. right? The yeah. spirit of let's say the holiday season that it is reflection. It's also like belief in family, belief in togetherness, belief mm -hmm. in love, belief in peace, belief in yourself, and, and remembering in the what stuff. matters yeah. Yeah. to you and to to the world. And that's. That's why I love this time of year, and um, that's why I wanted to do a holiday special. Oh, bro, we're hugging it out, man. I love, I love it. And love what it. I've realized here today is that I think you that's are good definitely stuff. like the McAllister family. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you realize that because you're from Chicago. Yes, this is which true. Which the McAllisters yes, are. Yes, they are. You went to Paris for Christmas. This is you true. went to Orlando for another. Yes, Remember, his yes. family goes down to really Florida go when he goes to New York. Oh, yes. And you lived in New York. There you go. I mean, come on. You are We're basically, basically I've had moments where I've run through O'Hare Airport. Just have you like really? Have. Yeah, yeah. Every time I go through that airport and I go through that, that one yeah. that with like with the, the grass, arches, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm like, oh wait, you gotta. I'm <laughs> looking for a guy in like a huge peacock. You yeah, know, run totally. up and be like, dad. But, totally. uh, but anyway, I'm so grateful that you stopped by today. Uh, I love this season. I love that we were able to do this and, and make this happen that you made time uh, for this today. Anyway, I do want to wish all of you guys out there, whatever you celebrate, a happy holiday season. Merry Christmas, happy Hanukkah, happy Kwanzaa, happy everything, happy New Year. Festivus. Festivus, all the things. Yes. I want to wish you happy all the things and just take a breath. You've got two days till Christmas. Hanukkah's now, New Year's is in eight days. Take a breath, enjoy the time with your family, enjoy the time with your kids, yeah. your parents. Uh, and if you don't have a tradition, start one. Yes. Right? Because traditions are fun. It's like that old thing, a journey of a thousand miles starts with one step. It's true. So take that one step this holiday season, and then you can thank the Dad Diary That's in like right. 2030. Anyway, love you guys as always. Sending you massive amounts of peace and tons of love. Happy holidays, everybody. Thanks for joining me, Eric. Thanks, man. All right, jingle bells. I don't know why I said that. <laughs> awesome. That was great, man. Yeah, that was fun.